Hello Kevin Hudson Rally here. This is just a talking video, um, just recapping on the weekend. I finally got out in the rally car uh, and it was just fucking awesome. Just like the best experience ever. Um, I didn't really get much footage of the day. I was uh, concentrating more on just learning the experience and just sort of... Um, uh, take down my facts, I don't need them. Uh, yeah, just learning, learning a day and um, trying to figure everything out, figure the scrutineering out and just, uh, yeah, getting my head around everything because it was, it was quite stressful on the build-up to it. Uh, just so many little things to get into place and w worrying about being let down on hiring vehicles and uh, just getting there, getting to the scrutineer and making sure that I had the car and everything all squared the way it was like the, the Friday night was quite stressful. Um, I have got a few photos. I'll just I'll talk through the photos actually and just sort of um, yeah do it that way. I can talk through the day a little bit then. Um, I actually thought I deleted these. Stage three and four. Uh, so this is a little recap of the stages. Stage so stage one and two was the same. Stage three and four were the same, and stage five and six were the same. Um, so this is three and four, quite similar to one and two. I think I deleted. I must have just deleted one and two, but um, yeah. So quite sort of started off in quite wide sections with some quite uh, quite like sort of wide junctions mainly squares uh, but it does go into some nasty tricky narrow sections quite overgrown there was loads of dirt and stuff on the road and dust and um you'd go into a corner and go into a couple you'd be fine go into another one hit a load of dust on the outside get a lot of understeer um so it was it was tricky and there was a guy there who when we were in the service park uh, he was a uh, mate of Nicky Grist, uh, Colin McCray's co-driver. He gave me a, a lot of really good advice at the start. Uh, basically telling me not to worry about anyone else. Don't worry about the times. You know, there's the fellas that were there do this event like two, three times. Well, yeah, two, three times a year. Um, in our class, class three, the class was really, really strong. So the, our class worked out. 1.6 uh, engine size to 2 litre engine size. Mine's a 1.7. So we're already at a bit of a disadvantage uh, engine size, especially when you're going up against 2 litres and stuff. But we had the likes of the, the Welsh Tarmac champion in the class. Uh, we had loads of those like Darient, for one or two of those Darient, like T90s, uh, like which basically a kick car just designed for rallying absolutely phenomenal sound awesome um a lot of other great talented experienced drivers that have put a lot of money into the cars as well um so he was like you know you've got no chance basically you've got no chance of competing just go out do your own thing and just learn and he he said like uh the first stage just drive through slow learn everything point out like here um, or make like a mental note of the sections that are tricky have a look where the gravel is have a look where the high curbs are this curbant is renowned for high curbs so there's no if you go off there's no sort of there's no like sort of runoff zone into a verge in most places where you can just sort of get back on if you go wide on one corner chances are you're bending your wheels and it's your rally over um so it's a really tricky rally um and he was like gobsmacked that we were actually doing it as our first ever event at first ever event uh with a co-driver jan who had never co-driven before we sort of started started this together uh, so we were both completely fresh out the box going into one of like one of the most tricky rallies that you can do uh tarmac rallies you can do so um for example, he had a, he's got a mate who's entered five times and hasn't finished the rally once. And this is someone who rallies all the time as well. So it's not like a place to be flamboyant. It's uh, you've got to keep controlled and drive sort of sensibly. Um, 
but yeah, yeah it's just awesome i wish i was back there now um <coughs> so yeah this is like quite a wide section the video you've probably seen is uh we had a mate with us who there was like one spectator area that the service crew could go to and it was this little section here um you come in quick but this is really tight and narrow and then there's like two walls about three four foot uh probably not that, that probably about two two foot something like that uh, either side here so the video that i had the one video was a bit shit because it's a section where you you slow down to go through which is a bit of a shame shame there wasn't a uh, some better areas to get to where you're absolutely flying um down here was one of my favorite bits this was awesome because it was like a load of uh, k rights and you just like just got quicker and quicker through this section as the day went on because we've done this um stage one and two and we've done it in three and four as well so by like stage four it was like really just missing the curves on, on every sort of corner you were going through um i think the first sta set stage we went through this bit this was a really tricky narrow bit but really fun as well um this a uh, fast section was fucking awesome like to get that you had like big wall either side of area and then and then going over this cattle grid at like i don't know 90 90 miles an hour 100 miles an hour i don't know what speed it was the uh, speedo doesn't work on the car but like you're pretty much flat out uh, and then you have to slow down for this chicane but the chicane you could take really fast as well i just i'm devastated i uh, i didn't have any i didn't bring a gopro a friend of mine was was going to borrow me one to do the event but forgot to bring it when he was sorting me out with his tailor and that um and i could have gone and picked it up but i said no because i was like oh it's just another thing to think about and set up i just want to concentrate on me driving but I, i'm really regretting that now um because i would have loved to have gone back and, and watched the footage of it but next time i'll definitely have some on board footage uh, this bit over here was like a bit of a quarry tight twisty uh, we were warned about this area beforehand you know we got told to slow down but you could actually get you could actually drive quite quick through this uh, once you've done it a couple of times and um, so that was a really awesome section as well where was the little drop down bit oh yeah yeah this bit was good because it's like drop down a little junction drop down again a little junction drop down again a little junction when you get that right that was a uh, that was that was phenomenal as well um there was another bit where was the bit by the roundabout i think it was here yeah so you sort of you go round the roundabout but then you've got like a, a square left it's worse than what it looks like on there so you sort of coming around the roundabout but then you've got to suddenly um do like a sharp left turn onto a really narrow concrete road where um like a little bit of a drop either side i think if you went off the concrete road you'd be a bit fucked trying to get back on and then into a square right it was just it's just awesome um so stage stages one two three and four were like quite were long stages took about probably for, for, for us about 15 minutes or so first stage was 17 minutes because i drove really slow through it um and then the last stage was like eight minutes long it was like a shorter shorter variation of it which was it was still good in fact it was really good actually just having that short blast but f 15 minutes in the car felt like two minutes like the first stage we ran through i couldn't believe we were at the finish i was like why is the stop signs there it was the end already it just it was over like that um yeah so we got like a bit of a warning as well from the uh from the organizers about how dirty because they hadn't been used for so long um yeah so already it was a bit like oh this is going to be this is going to be uh scary um yeah so that's just what was just the uh, prepping the car before i'm just giving it a wash nothing really to see there this was just outside the hotel so uh, so what we've done is on the thursday we drove down uh, sorry on the saturday 
we drove down um we went through scrutinizing and sound testing scrutinizing was was nowhere near as bad as what i thought it was going to be so anyone who's thinking of of um of go going and doing your first rally um just make sure obviously you check everything get the car presentable get it tidy but it's n- you'll if you're like me and you stress about stuff a little bit you'll build it up in your head and um you'll worry about it and it does nothing really to worry about you can get a bad scrutiny error but the guy the guy i had was brilliant um i told him it was our first event and he was just chatting to us about stuff he was chatting to to uh, jean because jean's from belgium um so he was talking to them a lot about how good the rallying was in belgium as like a sort of on an amateur level it's way cheaper to do the roads are great to rally on um and he was saying like we we should really try and get and do some rallies there as well um the only thing he nearly pulled me on which was a mistake by him is he said my fire extinguishers was were 10 years old um at that point my ass dropped because it was like the brand new what are you on about i've just bought them and he was like no he said to know the rules have changed and i was like well yeah so that's why i've got them i've got them brand new from a, a website and when he looked again he misread the date on the fire extinguishers yeah, so that is something you need to look out for if you're in the middle of building a car uh, or you're going out the rules have changed this year on fire extinguishers they need to be a certain sort of specs so just to have a look at that um on a certain volume um, i forget i can't remember off the top of my head um but yeah your hoses and stuff for your plumbed in system have got to be a certain uh diameter yeah and balaclavas as well is something that you need now fire retardant balaclavas um but you'll if you do an event on Kerwins, the scrutiny areas were pushing that on the lead up, making sure we didn't forget. Um, yeah, so we got our stickers uh, from the event. I believe that you don't always get that. Sometimes you've got to put the stickers on yourself, but we got we got provided everything, so it wasn't we didn't have to get anything extra. Um, but that was our number eighty seven. We had to uh, have the number there and the sponsor and stuff. Um, yeah, uh, a truck as well. We had to hire. That was that was a bit pricey. That was a, a cost I could have done without. It was three hundred and seventy quid to hire a truck from the Friday uh, to like the Monday morning. Um, so I, I need to I need to speak to someone and try and get a truck for next time because I don't want to be paying that every time. Uh, and the trailer as well as it i got off a pal um it was a bit of a one-off borrow because he's going to be using it himself a lot for drifting so yeah this these these are problems i'm gonna have to figure out for my next event and uh, that was just for me walking around the car when the fella come to collect it that's just a little video with taylor uh it was really sad to find out about um taylor hawkins passing while we were there as well sort of took the shine off driving off on the saturday we were due to go and see him uh, june and july in manchester and london uh, this is us seeing him in pula in croatia just before covid it we were front row two nights on the run so this like my this is my picture this is how close we were right at the front so uh, yeah that's just a little sad nugget uh, this was the service park so yeah service park was just basically find a spec, throw throw your sheet down. Uh, I bought loads of spares. Did I didn't need anything because it didn't crash out. But it's one of them. If you don't take it and you do need it, you you fucked that. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So it was a bit of a bit of a mad one. We just had to sort of do it. Um. Yeah. I don't know what I'd do next time. I probably probably take a little bit less maybe uh, but then i don't know you need to be prepared don't you for uh for if you do crash out um yeah so this is must have been after one of the stages because the tires were brand new and you can see them already starting to look a little bit uh 
bit worn. So fuel wise as well. So I wasn't sure what to do on fuel. We were gonna uh, take fuel containers and stuff, but we didn't. So what I done for me, which might work for you, it'll depend on how you drive and your engine size and your event. But I just filled the tank up because I didn't. It was another thing I didn't want to have to worry about. Yeah. I knew I wasn't going to be competing. I just all this this first event was just about learning in the car. Um yeah, so I just filled it up on the way. Didn't have any spare fuel and still had like quarter of a tank left after fifty fifty miles, fifty competitive miles. So um next time maybe I'll think about bringing containers and putting half a tank in or a quarter of a tank and trying to save on the weight, but I probably won't, to be honest, the next one. I'm not going to be competitive on the next one either. It's all this... Any event I do this year, which I'm hoping to get out for free, um, will just be learning, learning stuff and not worrying about times or competing or anything like that. Just just learning, learning the car, learning the, the difference in um, driving when the tyres and brakes and cold are cold compared to when they warm up was massive. I wasn't expecting that, to be honest. Like, you get towards the end of the stage, everything's nice and warm, cars breaking up, like, perfectly straight away. Um, and then you go into the service, you get, like, it was about 45 minutes between, between the stages one and two and then, like, an hour or so, or around an hour. Uh, for between stages three and four if i remember right something something along those lines um but when you get back to that start line and you go off again you notice straight away like how cold and it, a lot of people get caught out by it apparently so a lot of people will just start the next days they'll go straight in the brakes aren't warm the tires aren't warm and they go off um it could have happened i believe it might have happened actually at kevin because there was quite a few people sort of crashed out early on on early corners so i wonder whenever that's maybe been an issue that they've had they've just yeah they forgot to warm the brakes and the tires back up again and and it's caught them out but it, it's it's massive like massive the difference it makes um that's jan looking at the notes for next time getting all uh prepped out after every stage as well i was just opening the bonnet letting the heat get out uh cool the engine down a little bit because uh, it was a hot day as well um this is yeah this was at the start line of the stages so you get you, we got like a start line a start a, st a time to get to time and control um but what we found almost every stage there was a delay so it must have been them trying to clear clear people or I don't I don't know what. Um so we kinda you sort of just join a queue and then if there was any fast cars that I knew were faster than me that were behind me, but might uh crash that like there was a Ford Escort Mark II that had done events in Belgium and stuff, so he was a really quick driver. But he had issues with I think he broke down at the start line. So if he, we seen him, we just let him go in front of us because uh, we knew he was going to be quicker than us and we didn't want to hold him up. And again, there was a there was a guy we caught twice uh, on two stages. Um, so the next the next sort of stage in the queue, he pulled behind me and I just, we were like, I was, me and Jan didn't know what to do. We were like, do we let him in front because he see that the head of us or do we do we not and i in the end we just said i'll just keep him behind us because we know we were going to catch we knew we'd catch him because he started a minute it was 30 second starts and he'd started a minute ahead of us and we managed to catch him twice and i didn't want to be i got held up by him quite a bit uh, on those two stages i don't think he's seen us behind us and because it was my first event i wasn't too keen on like getting up someone's ass and beeping the horn and telling them to get out of my way so it was a bit like reserved when i was catching people and there was a couple of guys who just pulled over and just let us pass straight away um so that was fine and because we were so far at the back i didn't have anyone catch me so i didn't have to worry about it um yeah but that, that's one of those darians t90s i'd never even 
seen one of them before or heard of them until uh, until um, this is until like I'd started rallying doing this club and stuff. Never seen them in any games or you know, I think they're just like a sort of clubman entry kick rally car type thing. Um, this was us on the way home packing up back on the trailer after a fucking awesome event. Uh, just some video, uh, some photos throughout the day. And here, Jan's mate took Freddy. So nice one to him for taking uh, some vids. Like the car's so bog standard. Uh, we've got some decent brake pads in, but we've got normal brake discs. We've got drums on the back. The guy who I bought it off said he did. That. I'm sure he said he tried uh, discs on the back and he didn't like the feel of it. Said it, it felt better with just the drums. Um, so when you look at like how stock the car is compared to like the 20 30 40 grand people are putting into the other to the other cars in our class like those daddy and t90s i don't know how much they are it's sort of hit home that you're not going to really have a chance to compete it, it you just think about yourself let everyone else crash out and um just learn just get the experience Nice little Mark here, uh, Mark 1 Ezzy there, some loads of escorts actually, loads of Mark 1, Mark 2 escorts. Um, yeah, this is us going out, ah, so good. Uh, yeah, so, like say service area was like, good job, it's a sunny day, I don't know what I'm going to do when it starts raining and getting into winter, whenever to get like one of those tent things or not, I don't know. Um, yeah, so this is the video. Um, yeah, I've already put this on. So this is that junction that I was showing you earlier. Uh, if it ever loads in. Yeah, so this bit. You sort of come in for a nice fast section. But then the, the, the road here is really wide. But the road you turn on to here is really narrow. So you've got to like get that line right. And then say it was like a, a really narrow section um what's going on here that doesn't want to play for some reason yeah uh, this is me just that was when it come to pick the car up well i took a picture because i've done it through a third party company and I've, i said to the guy like i'll just do it direct next time if i have to get one again um yeah, so these are like the event photos now. Some of them look uh, pretty cool, like considering. Um, yeah, there's a lot of like this, this. The guy who gave us the tips as a start as well pretty much said, "Don't even bother cutting." He said there'll be places where you know you can cut or you think you can cut. Um, as he said, that that's another thing that will catch people out. And I haven't got an aluminium sub guard underneath the car yeah that's something that i need to um get because i need to build a bracket for it and there's a, there's a bit of work to go into it before i do it and my exhaust is hanging quite low as well the joint on the exhaust that i'll probably uh, cut out and weld and just do like one complete piece because it did worry about that on the uh thursday I took Jan out in the car when when Jan first flew over. It was the first time he'd ever met, first time he'd seen the car. So I took him for a a little spin round the street, the the roads by ours, uh, and nearly ripped the exhaust off on the speed bump, going slow, going like over it, like like really slow. So uh, I knew then that I wasn't never even going to attempt to do any cutting. Um, but you can see here as well how. Uh, dusty and dirty the roads are like look at that sort of dust and shite there a lot of the junctions were like that so you can see how clean it is so you come in nice clean road you go into one of these junctions and you just get understeer uh, which is something i played around with as well quite a bit when i knew i had sort of uh, room for it i was when i hit these like gravel sections i was trying to I was trying to get the car to understeer so I could play with it and figure out how to sort of get out of it at the same time as well. Um, and this was just all the, all the stuff I was trying to do to like learn the car. Um, yeah, but you can sort of see the dust in it. 
Yeah. Oh, car looks. Uh, car looks. His car was brilliant. Just handled fantastic. So much fun to drive. Um. Yeah. Again, dust, shit, gravel, shite, all over, all over the roads. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like some of the curves, like are really low, but most of them are like half a foot or foot high. Um. Yeah, some nice uh you can see I think this one I don't know there's one similar to this but you can see how much I'm sort of pushing. Like the tires like the wheels there and the tires over there. Um uh, where's the where's my finger now? Uh, yeah, so it's like old military base. There's sections around this this like a, it's like a fob to call down the um where it was really sort of slippy you come round like a bit of a like a bit of a square left but as you come round there's like a roundabout like an old battered roundabout that you can cut across i've seen people cut across them on the onboards that i've watched from like past events but on this event they had a big log there so i come round thinking oh i'll cut across this this thing here and the, I come round too quick, and then we sort of you'd have to swing onto the gravel, the ro the road, but it's full of gravel, and then there was a big pothole in the middle of it as well, on your line for the next corner. Um, so one of the times we come round there, I come round, I think I went to the left of the pothole to try and avoid avoid it, and then the angle for the next square left was totally wrong. Um, hit a load of understeer, sort of got out of it, but gripped better than I expected. And my wheels were still on an angle when I started to grip again, and it like sort of pulled me into the into the, the wall at the side, knocked the wing mirror, the wing mirror nearly fell off. Uh, that was like, that was one of the only moments really that we had. That was a bit like, ooh, uh, and even that wasn't even that bad. Yeah, we did like sort of, we kept it really sensible again you can see i don't know if that's the same junction uh, but you can see like coming off a nice road onto a, a shitty dusty road like the roads that are, the main roads that were getting used all the time weren't that bad but then you're just turning off them Um you just you're not always sure what the what the exit's going to be like at a corner because you're not you're never sure what the conditions were going to be like Um I like this bit where it's like properly ride on the edges. That must have been. I'm probably thinking, shall I cut? Shall I cut? And then I just like nip in at the end. But I could have realistically, I could have. But I potentially could have cut there. But again, my exhaust that low, that the lip of that, the lip of that uh, curb could have ripped my exhaust off. Even though it looks like a fairly decent, decent cut. Um. So yeah, I was I was dead conscious of that. I'd, didn't want to get anything in the middle of the car to just rip the exhaust and ruin the day. It just wasn't wasn't worth it at all. Um, so just like just like nipping in on those little sections. Uh, some other like good angles. I think that's the one with the. Uh, no, just that corner with the tire. Must be another photo. Um, another tight narrow section like pretty much a car's width not much more than that like walls everywhere just loads of places i think that's that one of the walls there yeah so there's like walls but some of them are, are quite well hidden by scrubs and, and bushes bushes and that you don't always see them until you sort of pass them or or on them um yeah again shitty shitty sections just look at that gravel everywhere uh, just all over the place but just like it was really safe on the gravel bits um, I say you do, you, you're driving through these stages and almost every corner there's like someone someone else has crashed out someone else has crashed out someone else has crashed out um, so they are like really really tricky um, that's that section again uh, these are pretty much like the same corners but uh like the, the other runs through um yeah so oh, i just, just want to go again it's 
yeah, just want to go again. So, um, yeah, that's it really. I just wanted to sort of do an update uh, on what happened throughout the day. And uh, like I say, if anyone else is thinking of doing it or going for it themselves, I'm sure these have uploaded twice, these are the same photos. Um, yeah, if anyone's like, yeah, thinking of doing it or um, just is about to do it and just is a little bit nervous and hasn't really got the information uh, on what it's like the first time, it, it, it's fine. Everyone in the service path is really helpful as well. Uh, there's a nice sort of, um, there's a nice sort of atmosphere of most people. The only people who was, like there was some of the richer fellas uh, who put a lot of money into the cars probably a little bit less helpful not helpful but um there's one or two snarky people there there was one snarky person there um yeah it was a bit it was a little bit funny to me to jan's pal uh, just asked about like his card and stuff and if there was more than the same class and he was just like uh, check check the start and list just like all right yeah whatever dickhead um and that was pretty much yeah um yeah these are definitely the same pictures don't know what's going on there um yeah so yeah i don't know what else to say really it's just i suppose um i suppose the, the question people probably want to know is how it compares to the sim um so i mean i've done one event so it's not for me to really say oh yeah this is this is uh, exactly like real life or this isn't like real life it's just yeah I've, I've done one event at the end of the day but what i will say is on the run i never used to drive i used to hate driving front wheel drive cars uh on rbr i just never liked it but i forced myself to do it on the build up to it uh, and actually started to enjoy them and i'll say like your left foot braking um left foot braking in rbr with like the front wheel drive cars and controlling the speed and the corner and the angle and just sort of keeping keeping your accelerator pinned but just controlling the understeer and the oversteer with the brake that was coming massively helpful when i done the event because uh, i was left foot braking a lot i wanted to put didn't want to just drive normal because everyone sort of says oh don't bother don't heel toe don't let foot break, just drive it. And I didn't want to do that. I want to put all my skills into practice straight away. Yeah, so they become like second nature. Um, but that was like massively helpful. Uh, just like controlling, controlling the, the car with me brake rather than the accelerator. Like obviously a bit more brake, you sort of get more steering, a bit less, you sort of... Um, you get less steering so you can you can keep the angle of the car the same and you can like the steering angle but control it with your with your left foot braking of how much it's actually turning in um so that was massively massively helpful uh, and skills that i put into the day uh, same with the heel towing i was heel towing all the time um it was helpful coming into the junctions because I was like I was able to come down the gears, obviously do my heel towing, uh, without having to uh, take my foot off the brake or anything, and then just quickly on the way out, just quickly switch to uh, my left foot on the brake to sort of get out and control that steering again. So it, in that sense, the like RBR is just the best tool ever, uh, and I suppose any sim any racing sim like uh, driving sim but for me rbr and um, but going back to the sim <laughs> after doing that like today is the first time i've been on um and it just feels so empty you now like so sort of hollow i mean it'll take me an hour or so and i'll be back into it but like the first thing I done when I went on RBR is just drove into a wall because I was waiting for that seat of your pants feeling that I just didn't have and it just it just feels like 
it feels like I'm missing so much information information now uh, when I went on to RBR before. But I've just got to relearn it and re- remember what I'm getting through the wheel and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's 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 a great tool, obviously, um, to learn your driving and keep the skills. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I think I'd need like a motion simulator or something now to get that feeling properly. But even then, it's sort of simulated. Uh, not re- not real like but like braking and stuff and feeling the the heat and the tires and the brakes that that's like something that RBR has got as well where um like um braking temperatures and tire temperatures are part of like M- NGP6 um but I d- I don't really notice it when I'm playing RBR not really. Uh, I'm sort of aware it's there to an extent, but in real life, it's so apparent. It's it is massive. Like it's night and day to finishing and st- finishing a stage and starting a stage. Like stage three, uh, I over pushed. I tried to drive a bit more aggressively to, uh, you know, find some different limits with the car and stuff. And halfway through. I could feel that I was too harsh on the tyres. The tyres were baking, they were stinking. Um, the brakes were like wouldn't say I wouldn't say like massive brake fade, but I could tell that they were probably a little bit too hot. Um, so I had to sort of back down. To be honest, I got forced to back down because I got stuck behind someone, um, and everything kind of cooled down again. So like the next stage, I I, I drove a lot neater. Uh, a lot more sort of stable, a lot more focused, less... I was was having so much fun flicking the car, even though it's not the fastest way to do it, that it was hard not to do, because it just felt good just to... That like, for a front-wheel drive car, when you flicked it, it almost felt like driving rear wheel. At some points, the way the RSN come round, it was, the car was so much fun to drive. Uh, but it just... Yeah, it just... It put too much... It just put too much temperature and stuff into the brakes and uh, the tyre, especially with this event because there's so many junctions in here. So off and on the brakes all the time, slowing down for square, loads of square left, square right, square left, square right. Um, and so, yeah, that is something that you just don't get in uh, RBR. And even racing sims, like I've tried racing sims, uh and it's still like the same. You're still just you're missing, you you you're missing so much information, um. Yeah, but again, at the same time, it's a massive help because it's helped me to jump into the car, and have all those skills ready to put to practice straight away, like the left foot brake and the heel toe and everything, um, understanding the car and what it's doing and, uh, flicking it in and and all that palaver. So. Mm. on one hand like yeah it's brilliant it's fantastic sim racing but on the other hand there's still you're still missing a hell of a lot of information uh, that you just can't get with a simulation um so yeah uh i'll jump back onto rbr and i'll try and it's like i've got to relearn it it's dead it's dead weird um but yeah it's still still the best game ever what can you say uh, yeah uh, so that's uh, that's pretty much it probably fucking rambled on for fucking hell 40 minutes uh, okay this was meant to be a 10 minute video uh, yeah well, I doubt no one's even still watching but yeah thanks for watching if you're still here uh, and I'll see you on the next one